friends and colleagues, I'm Vence Stankum from Bulgaria and I have the pleasure to share with you a case with immediate implant placement in a socket that the soft tissues are almost perfect. So here we need to replace a single central incisor and uh, the patient have a history of endodontic treatment and internal bleaching and uh, unfortunately she have external resorption or maybe it's internal and we are not able to save this tooth. The key for this case is that we have the soft tissue that is almost in perfect condition. So basically what we need to do is just to preserve this tissue in the same situation and to compensate for the shrinkage that we're going to have from the extraction. To achieve this, we need to put the implant in an acceptable position. We need to compensate the shrinkage with the connective tissue graft. We need to replace the ground in the same position that it was before the extraction. And in this way, we are going to support the papillas and minimize the papilla shrinkage. And after that, during the prosthetic treatment, we need to copy the perfect profile that we were able to preserve. So let's start with the extraction of the tooth. And uh, here, basically, I start with the separation of the supracrestal uh, fibers that are connecting the uh, keratinized tissue to the tooth. And then we're going to try to luxate with the thin instruments of course, you need to keep in mind that this tooth is with internal resorption and obviously the chance to break is very high. But anyway, first we separate the periodontal fibers, then we try the luxation. I try with the forceps and you can see here that I already have a breakage of the tooth. And now I'm going to focus on the extraction of the apical part. Again, we continue with the same pin instrument to try to luxate the root. And then I'm going to grab, and this here is a root pickup from uh, U3D that I'm just going to put the rest of the tooth out. And uh, uh, when I combine the two parts of the tooth, you can see the amount of the resorption internal and external. And uh, obviously the tooth was not, we are not able to save this tooth. So from here, this is a picture of the extracted tooth with the resorption that it have. And to put the implant, we need to have some planning. And what we planned here with uh, Mil Bobev from Berlin, uh, we are trying to have the implant in a position that we engage enough bone to have a primary stability. In the same time, the screw axis, I prefer to be in the singulum area so I can make a screw retained crown. And we need to have a certain depth in order to create a good profile for the for the tissues, for the emerging profile of the crown and the transmucosal uh, components. So with uh, the guide, we can achieve a really predictable position. This is an M guide here. After the extraction, we need to briefly clean the socket and something that I believe it's important. We need to remove the pocket epithelium, the so-called epithelium and the pocket epithelium if we have a pocket and to refresh the surface so we have a bleeding connective tissue surface. The sequence of the drill is like uh, is typical for the uh, for the M guide. So we start with the pilot drill, then we're gonna use the uh, yellow one and the red one and maybe just to has the primary stability, I'm not gonna use the final drill in the full depth. Obviously, we are in a good position here, parallelly to the initial root socket. So we have enough bone to engage. So I'm not afraid of the primary stability here. Usually the primary stability that I want to have is between 35 to 55 uh, uh, Newtons. I don't like to have less or more. If I have less, obviously I'm not going to proceed with immediate implant placement. Uh, I mean gonna proceed with the immediate implant placement but I'm not gonna make the immediate loading. The When we work with the V3 important thing is to keep the flat surface to the front and the depth that I prefer to put my implants is four millimeters under the desired soft tissue margin. So the position of the implant is good. Let's continue. This is the sequence of the drilling. So the red drill I'm not gonna use the full length or I'm going to use a shorter drill. For instance, if I put a 11.5 millimeter implant, maybe I will go with the 8 millimeter drilling. Then we're going to use the connective tissue graft to compensate for the shrinkage that we have. And this is how we're going to collect the connect, uh, harvest the connective tissue graft here. So this is 
the most posterior uh, part of the palate next to the tooth. So basically I'm going to do a two parallel incision with a calibrate thickness. This thickness should be around one to one and a half millimeter. Nowadays maybe even a bit less in order to be able to compensate the shrinkage for the extraction of the tooth. What I'm aiming here is to harvest a very superficial graft which consists mainly of lamina propria and uh, the qualities of this graft I believe are very very efficient for the compensation for the compensation of the shrinkage that we have after extraction. With these two incision I can achieve very easily primary closure with a very simple interrupted sutures actually nothing special just two very simple interrupted sutures and the healing and the comfort of the patient I believe is uh, uh, perfect with this harvesting technique. So this is the implant in an almost perfect situation, perfect position and now we need to realign the crown in the same position that it was before. That's why I'm using a jig that is made from pattern resin that I make before the extraction so I can keep the crown exactly in the same position and in this way I can support the interproximal soft tissues perfectly. After I reconnect the crown of course I need to redo to uh, put some composite to enhance the profile. In order to put the connective tissue I'm gonna make a pouch in front of the implant. Basically here I'm just opening the periosteum and uh, then I'll prefer, I will go with a tunneling instrument so I will preserve the periosteum on the flap. I'm not care I don't care about leaving the periosteum on the bone and creating partial thickness because this bone anyway is going to resorb. For me it's much more important to have the periosteum in the flap because this periosteum with, will feed my graft. So here I'm going to use two marionette sutures just to push the graft in place. So one is from the distal here and then I'm going to make exactly the same suture from the mesial part and in this way I'm going to stretch the graft over the buccal bone and just a little bit underneath the soft tissue margin. Maybe the best uh, situation is if the connective tissue graft is one millimeter under the final margin. You can see the location of the graft here. Additionally we can use a bone in the gap. So here first I'm putting the cover screw in order for the bone particles not to go inside the connection and I'm going to use the plugger in order to uh, put the bone in the frontal gap and this is the crown that we that is re, that is reattached to the implant component in exactly in the situation that it was before the surgery so to achieve that again we need to have this primary uh, the jig that is uh, locating the initial the initial position of the crown and uh, then we need to have a certain depth in order to achieve these two millimeters of the pure titanium, polished titanium that we're gonna uh, use as a seal zone and then we're gonna use this part of this zone for support in order to support the soft tissue and by this I mean the proximal parts will support the papillas and the buccal part will support, support the flap, the tunnel flap and the graft in the, in the correct place. So this is the situation after suturing this is on the 14 days when I remove the sutures and this is the profile that we have after 4 months. From here what we need to do is just to copy the perfect profile and to create a new crown. Additionally what we have here is some composite uh, plant on the, uh, uh, to the neighboring incisor in order to uh, be able to achieve uh, uh, the two centrals that have the same width. So this is uh, the crown in place and the composite that we are going to use is done by a colleague. This is the final situation and you can see here the, uh, not only the face uh, after but you can see the, the x-ray progression. So on the far left we have the tooth with external resorption, then we have the implant in place, the temporary crowns after 4 months and then the protocol picture with the uh, impression component. So in order to be able to keep the soft tissue in a perfect condition, we need to have the implant in a good position. We need to use a connective tissue on the buccal part. 
we need to replace the crown in the position that it was before in order to be able to support this tissue and when we have the healing this connective this uh, uh, perfect profile let me say almost perfect profile we need to copy in the final prosthetics so with this i want to say thank you and hope to see you soon bye bye